Today we are going to be talking about how we can use audio node in MASH to create audio spectrums, waveforms and so on. So let's see how we can use this uh, particular node. So I'm going to start off by taking a cube. Uh, it can be any primitive that you want. And uh, I'm going to quickly go to the MASH menu if you don't have the MASH menu. Uh, again, you can go to Windows Plugin Manager. Just scroll down and you should see a MASH. All right, make sure you load it. All right, so I'm going to click on MASH. All right, and as you can see, we have our linear distribution. And with the linear distribution, what you can do is just uh, change it a little bit. I'm going to turn off my grid for now. And I'm going to just reduce it. Let's maybe add quite some numbers. Um, maybe something like this. And if you want to keep it uh, just a little bit space so we can. Actually, let's keep it like this. And uh, if you're done with the distribution, if you want to change the distribution, you can uh, if you want to do a particular thing. All right. Once you're done with this, uh, we're going to go back to MASH. And the first node you'll notice is the audio node. All right. So um, that is a pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it basically lets you channel your audio to create your MASH animation. So I'm going to click on this. Let's add the audio node. And you'll notice the first thing that will ask for you is the file. All right, it has different modes and which we'll see uh, in a bit. So one thing to keep in mind when you're um, importing your audio that Maya does not support compressed audio formats. So you have to bring your audio formats in a WAV file or maybe it's uh, it can be an AIFF file. Apart from that, I don't think it um, it does not take MP3. So make sure you have WAV files. Uh, so I'm going to click here and I have a file on my desktop, All right? This is ringside. I got it from YouTube's creator studio. And uh, as you can see, we have our uh, all the audio imported, the one we needed. And if I play this, you'll notice that it will start to react, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, you'll notice that we have mode. We can set it to average and we can change it to spectrum. We have the output to multiply and we have normal as well. So as I scrub through, you'll notice that we are getting this wave from and if you want, we can set it to average, which will just create an average uh, spectrum and create this kind of animation. All right. So I'm going to just quickly scrub uh, somewhere in the middle where we can pretty much just see the entire animation. And let's keep it to spectrum. And there you go. All right. So it looks pretty good. And uh, so what else can we do with this um, by creating by adding your music here so the one thing you'll notice the spectrum the waveform you're getting is exactly as the waveform the spectrum has on the music all right so if you want you can change uh, your pretty much positions right you can also change your position y and so on so if you play here like this you'll notice that you'll get something like this and you can also change it in the z direction if you want to create that 3d look let me just change the background right and yeah so it will animate so the stronger the bands are the stronger the frequency are the more uh, you can see transform is going to get so if i change uh, let's say the rotation and uh, let's give it a rotation of maybe something let's keep it to negative maybe 180 all right uh all right so it's uh, gonna go positive only because uh, we don't have the negative value all right and uh, which we are going to change in a bit uh so again you can go for rotation y and z as well all right and as i said the higher the frequency the stronger the frequency the more uh is going to affect your translate or whatever the value I've put in one more thing you'll notice is that we have the scalar value on the y-axis apart from this if you want uh, in a particular direction you can keep it to any other direction you want and so on and then if you play this you'll notice that you start to get those spectrum uh, the other interesting thing about the audio node is uh, you have the frequency graph where you can pretty much change how this uh, overall controls how this entire sequence uh, behave and so on and once you have this you can set it to smooth uh, make sure you select all the interpolation and from there if you play this now you'll start to visualize it right so if you want uh, just a bit um, strong right, we can create some uh, harsh values very deep values like this right uh, but again uh, 
it's not as smooth as it's supposed to be. So if you want to create a really smooth looking visualization, what you can do is you can increase the bands. Uh, if you have worked in After Effects with the audio spectrum, it's pretty much similar to that. Uh, the more amount of frequency bands you have, the smoother it's going to look. So the more bands you have, uh, the more, as I said, frequency, uh, the smoother frequency you're going to get, thus creating a smoother animation. So if I increase this, let's say if I go for 100 or let's go for a 150, uh, you'll notice that it's a quite smoother, but if that still doesn't help, you also have a smoothing option, right? And that will just create this smooth animation. So what you can do is, apart from this, I'm going to keep it back to one. We can go to distribute and uh, let's just increase the number to maybe let's say, or right, let's keep it to 60. And uh, I can maybe change this to like 60. All right. And also, if you want, you can just directly change your cube shape to look something like this. All right. So once you have your cube like this, you can go back to your mesh distribute and uh, just increase, uh, sorry, decrease the distance you have to maybe like, let's say 14. And from here again, we can go back to the audio and we can just start playing from here. So you'll have much more a uh, precise looking animation again increase the smoothness uh, how much scale you want on that all right if you want to add up some rotation you can add some rotation all right and there you go so again uh, there's a lot of different ways uh, that you can do this again you can control your strength and uh, the overall random strength as well and if you want to just create something else out of it, let's say if you want to create a standing equalization or something like this, again, you can create a cube. Let's go to mash, create the mash network. And in the distribute, we can switch it to the grid. And in the grid, let's take maybe something like six. All right. And uh, yeah, I think five translate is good. Let's add our audio node. I'm going to quickly go to my audio. And let's bring in our file. There you go. And you'll notice that we have the animation going on. And let's quickly set it like this. All right, looks pretty good. And again, I'm going to increase some smoothing angles. I'm going to increase some bands in here. And then we can start playing. And you'll notice that we get something like this. And uh, it looks pretty good. Again, if you want, you can uh, set the blending to the multiply the output. It's uh, similar to creating the audio effect and the normal effect. But thus, though we don't have any animation on the cube, it's not showing anything. We can also set it to average. We'll get this weird looking animation. And again, we can translate our entire thing wherever we want. And let's maybe give it a rotation. And there you go. Right. Uh, so let's get creative with this. Let's try to create uh, something different that uh, can create something uh, of a nice motion graphics effect. So I have a torus here and what I'm going to do is quick, quickly increase the radius and let's decrease the section radius to maybe like 0.2. And uh, I think this is looking quite good. And I'm just going to quickly increase the segments to 50 and 50. All right, looks pretty good. And again, if you want, you can take another torus or if you want, you can also go to create a polygon primitive and let's take a pipe. You can also right click here um, on the platonic to create your pipe. Right? And uh, what I'm going to do is again, we can just transform this to maybe um, if you want to see if it fits or not, because you want to create a ring circle around here. So what I'm going to do is quickly um, change the rotation Z to 90 degrees. And again, just uh, get a temporary idea of uh, how good this is looking around the entire thing. So I'm going to just decrease the radius, something like that. And I think it's looking quite good. And I'm just going to decrease the height to maybe like 0.4, I believe. All right, so looks pretty good. I'm going to zero out the Z translate. So it's back in the middle. All right, so it looks pretty good. What I'm going to do is click on mash. Go to mash here. And again, as you can see, we have lots and lots of mash um, distribute. And what uh, here you can do is you can switch it to um, radial. And let's change the radial axis to Z and X. All right, and let's reduce the radius to 
a value. I think uh, it's perfect, but let's make it two. Yeah, there you go. All right, so it looks pretty good. Um, you can increase the numbers if you want. I suggest uh, increasing the numbers uh, just so we have, we can hide the entire torus. Then we can shade two different colors for both of them. Let's take the audio node. Let's bring in our audio. All right, and there you go. So now you'll notice that we are getting this weird scale because only Y axis has been changed. So what we can do is um, put in the same value in here. All right, and let's quickly see it. Yeah, there you go. All right. So you'll notice that uh, since the other axis has a higher value, it's kind of uh, overriding the whole thing. So let's keep a minimal value of maybe like a 10, um, 10 and 10. And let's see, all right, looks quite good. I think we might just have to reduce the number of clones here. Okay, I'm looking quite good. Uh, I'm gonna keep it back to 100 and let's maybe try to smooth this out with more bands in here and you can see how bands are reflecting here. And yeah, there you go. So yeah, this is looking quite good now. Try to uh, change the different scale to see which fits perfectly and again uh, if you want a bit more smoother looking animation make sure you have enough subdivision in your uh, pipe as well so i'm going to create a smooth subdivision here and if i show you the wireframe you'll notice that we have a highly subdivided mesh for both of our meshes and this looks quite good so again we can go to mash here and go to audio let's uh, maybe crank this up to maybe like 15 and 15 and there you go that looks pretty good again you can change the random strength how you want to uh, keep the strength you want to decrease the strength and also add the rotation to create this kind of animation all right and again, if you want to move this in a certain position, you can always move it by creating a translate value. So that can also uh, sometimes provide a different looking animation. So yeah, feel uh, free to work around it. Now, one last thing to keep in mind is uh, when you're working with this and you've played with everything, strength and everything, you have this something called as the fall off. Uh, let's say you don't want to uh, create your animation immediately you want to show uh, animation in and out sequence so what you can do is right click here and you can create a fall off once you've created the fall off you'll notice that you're getting two hollow spheres these two hollow spheres are going to create the entire animation so if i double click here you'll get into the fall off section and here you'll notice the inner zone so consider this inner zone as the full strength of the entire animation and the outer zone is kind of like a fall off so you have 100 strength and then slowly fading away so 90 80 60 50 and so on and so on and so on to zero right so if i move this all right and i'm gonna uh, keep it somewhere in the middle and then select the fall off and if I just move this, you'll start, you know, since this is audio, it takes a little bit of time to refresh. So what I'm going to do is quickly animate this uh, just so we can see the overall difference. And I'm going to also change the entire fall off size as well. So let's hit R on the keyboard and let's change it. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, keep this outside. All right. And you can uh, simply go in here to uh, check out your fall off uh, entire thing let me just go back to the audio uh, and this is the follow-up what I want to change is yeah okay so uh, if you click on the follow-up on the outline this was actually what I was looking for you can uh, simply click here and I'm gonna move this higher in the time and I'm gonna simply animate it here and right click key selected and now if I play this you'll notice that it will start to animate Right. So what fall off is basically, as I said, uh, it's uh, basically creates this uh, fall off a region where the animation is going to happen. Either you can choose uh, for it to be a non animating part or you can choose it to be the only animating part in your entire composition. So here, uh, if you create invert fall off, what it will do is uh, anything that you have animating in your scene will be animated outside the zone. Uh, but if you ch uncheck this, anything that is inside this zone will be animated. You can change the shape of this. You can 
uh, take a cube nerve particle mesh whatever you want you can change the inner zone you know how stronger or uh, lighter you want it the whole animation from uh, sometimes it's uh, quite linear and you want those smoother animation a very nice follow so that's why you have an inner zone and the outer zone and again you have the display color if you want to change the color how your uh, this looks fall off looks you can change it and again uh, you have a simple ramp if you want you can smooth this out or if you want to change it you can do that as well so again here you can pretty much see your animation again click on your fall off go to channel box and here you'll notice that uh, we have two keyframes from uh, the one keyframe sets the fall off outside of our torus and then it slowly comes in and stays there so what we can also do is we can make it animate out so i can just bring this up and right click on translate z and key select it so let's see the entire animation now right so uh, actually we did not uh, animated the y axis so let's quickly animate it as well so right let's go here key selected and then let's go forward in time and i'm gonna just bring this up right click key selected there you go so now it should look nice okay yeah and there you go so this is how you can create fall off and if you ever want to get rid of the fall off let's say if you added the fall off and now you just don't want it what you can do is simply right click here and break connection and uh, the fall off will be completely removed although you will see fall off in your viewport and outliner so simply click here and delete it it will get rid of the fall off as well all right so totally up to you uh let's say if you did add the uh, fall off and you just don't if you just want to turn off uh your fall off you don't want to delete it because you have applied so many settings and you don't want to get rid of it immediately you can simply turn it off by clicking here so it will have no impact on your animation whatsoever if you change your mind you can always go back here and turn it on now apart from that again you can go to uh, audio shape where is your mesh select your mesh and go to audio and again you can create it you can connect it if you want your fall off to be you can always drag and drop it here and again um, you can let me just get in yeah turn it on and off right uh, if you did create it the entire audio node by mistakenly what you can also do is go up and you can turn this entire animation off or if you want you can also delete the entire audio node as well all right so feel free to dive in here a lot of different options to give you the entire control on your animation all right guys so that's it for this one um, that uh, was it for the audio note there's a lot of different possibilities what you can do for especially for uh, those who are into creating the audio visuals uh, and so on after effects are a similar effect called the uh, audio spectrum it creates similar it has the frequency bands and everything so this is just uh, in 3D. So it creates a lot of possibilities to create something. And one of them I just showed. So feel free to dive in, create something interesting. Uh, I'm looking, I'm always looking forward to seeing new stuff coming up. And uh, in the next video, we'll talk about how to use the curve node and how to get around that. All right, so that's it for this one. And I'll see you in the next video.